Hello and welcome to Back on the Road Pro Wrestling Archives podcast. This is Alan Fenstermaker here with Rick Smooth. How are you doing today, Rick? Man, I'm chilling, man. I'm, we're chilling up on Overlook Mountain right now, and uh, you know we're overlooking, uh, you know, one of the the coolest uh, towns of all time, Woodstock, New York. Yeah, we're about like 3,000 feet up here in the sky, and like we were um, going down that mountain on our bikes, and dude, that's what, quite a rush right there, just uh, letting gravity take us down the mountain. Tell you what, man, um, my, my brakes were not doing uh, too great down that hill, and there was moments where I just couldn't stop it, so I, you just gotta ride it out, man, you know? Yeah, best I could do, and like I had my a thing on my phone, which was telling me I was going about like six miles an hour down that mountain, and this was with me like uh, slowing it up a little bit because yeah, you had, I don't. You had your foot down. I, yeah, because I didn't want to like flip or anything like that, because my brakes were a little iffy as it is too, and I didn't want to yeah. like risk like flipping over the handlebars or nothing. <laughs> right, right. I mean, Alan, you're a better biker than I am, man. So like. Uh... I think I think going down that mountain with a little bit of caution today was a good idea for you, man. I mean, it was cool cruising, but you know, it's kind of like skiing, man. It's like you know, I kind of felt a little bit out of control of what what I was trying to do, you know. Yeah, but anyway, back to wrestling. I know, like last night, it was crazy. I was watching this. Um, I was watching uh, WWE SmackDown last wow. night, and honestly. Like the program is is not really doing so well, in my opinion. Like I know the mat- the show started off with. Um, it was AJ Styles versus Matt Riddle, and um, AJ Styles uh, won the match and he retained the Intercontinental Title. But uh, the other matches that I, was, that I actually paid attention to is like um, I know like Alex. It was um, right now uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks are the uh, women's tag champions. And uh, but the weird thing is like, dude, I like for watching it, I kept zoning out because the product wasn't really getting my attention. What do you think? I, you know, I stopped watching a couple of weeks ago. I haven't looked back, but what I do is, is now here on the Pro Wrestling Archives, I do a couple different series of uh, workers and wrestlers that are either missed, uh, not spoken about very often by WWE, or, um, you know, uh, people that have passed or transitioned on. Um, I find that by honoring the old WWF stuff, that it makes me be able to to be okay with walking away from you know the modern product. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like AEW seems to be where it's at. AEW and MLW, it's like are are uh, are leaving WWE in the dust. But um, right now with this whole pandemic thing, you got like uh, the only only promotions really running or that you hear about are WWE or WWE and AEW, which. Also brings me to this too, like uh, with all the social talk about social distancing, people. What you got to do is like uh, sometimes you got to social distance from your cell phone. Like um, so true, so true. Yeah, because people are like social distancing from each other. Like even like for ten minutes a day or an hour a day. Like dude, it's just uh, being up here in the mountain. Like I, I put my phone aside sometimes, and like do, doing that is like the ultimate like cleanse and like uh, sets me free. So this is what I'll say about that is I think that. What the world needs to do right now is um, shift the paradigm again by now letting go of smartphones and cell phones and things like that and get back to the paradigm that we've always operated in, which is what what was, what is, and what will always be. So if you put down your cell phone, let's say you put down your smartphone today for, let's just say for, um, we'll, we'll start you know, for an hour, okay, and then from there, you only use it like maybe 10 minutes a day for whatever it is you need to use it for, you know, as a, uh, either a phone book, you know, it, a good thing to do is, is to get off the smartphone and back to that, the house line, um, by doing so, you will see your own paradigm start to shift, and you'll probably start to feel like, you know, like it's the late 90s, early 2000s, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it kind of seems like that world kind of stopped for a little bit, and we got real uh, technological, and getting back to that is where I feel comfortable operating. I know that because I, I'm an old school kind of guy. All the shit I like is from, you know, the years, you know, 1940s to let's just say uh early 2000s when it comes to music pro wrestling movies all that stuff um so if we could shift that paradigm back to where we feel comfortable operating like i said which is what was what is and what will always be then i think that i I think humanity will survive this drought of good entertainment 
Yeah, exactly. True. That's very true. Like, uh, get back to the old school. And um, I guess, that, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, with AEW, I've been following it, and I, I like it. I'm looking forward to watching it this week. Um, I've noticed a trend with them that they do one real hot week, and then they'll do a week that, that's not so hot. So, I'm not sure what it is that they're doing, whether they're experimenting with different ideas or maybe they, maybe sometimes they're hitting you know home runs and then other times they're striking out. I don't know, but um, the the roster's starting to fill out. You're starting to see that there's some there's some characters in there that are definitely worth checking out. I you know I get a little tired of the um, the wrestling game stuff that they do. Like they, they mimic a lot of stuff from wrestling games. They are doing it in an innovative way that makes the wrestling different, which I think is okay, but they're mimicking some of the worst wrestling games when they're doing some of these moves that they're doing. Like the old THQ games were way better than the Rockstar games as far as gameplay. So I don't understand why take something from something that's not as good you know, maybe that's just a flavor thing. Somebody, somebody might say, "Oh, well, you don't like this," but this person might like that, and that's okay. But I'd like to see the wrestling promoters give the real wrestling fans what they want because I have that feeling if they do that, they will come back. A lot of wrestling fans have not come back to the product yet because the product has not been ready, and maybe that's because the product is kind of saying "fuck you back," or that the promoters are saying "fuck you back." You're gonna walk away from us, but it can't be like that. You always gotta, you always gotta play to, you know, the crowd that that you want to watch your product, and and I think I, I I could say this that old school wrestling fans are a different breed than today, and I think that a lot of that has to do with the fact that smartphones have tuned the frequencies of people to something in a new ballpark where we are not really that comfortable with working with it. Yeah, another thing too, I was just thinking about like uh, when you got AEW and WWE, like um, you got Matt Hardy in AEW yep. and then you got his brother Jeff in uh, WWE. Now yeah, like, and cool. I know like uh, Matt Hardy's recent storylines, they're feuding him with Sheamus and like it was kind of interesting too because it kind of mimicked his... Um, Something that happened in his past with the drinking and the drugs and everything, like uh, by setting him up with this accident where he took out Elias, but like I mean, where it was made to look like he did, but as it turned out, like uh, they saw somebody with a red beard and red hair, like knock, you know, like jump Jeff Hardy out of his car and um, and just uh, throw him in the bushes, where pretty much he got set up by Sheamus, which honestly. <laughs> In my opinion, like that'll be a good feud, but even better, like it'll be kind of interesting to see how that plays out when uh, when Elias comes back, because when Elias comes back to see like um, I know Elias will probably want to get some retribution for that too to see how they incorporate him in the angle. So you never know, like um, yeah. yeah. So bringing um, Bruce Pritchard back into the the picture too, you know, this is what I'll say about that is. Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard have had a long working relationship, and they have worked together since, you know, the, the late 80s and the golden era of pro wrestling into, uh, you know, some shadier eras of pro wrestling and were slow to get back on their feet in the Attitude Era. I mean, they did get back on their feet in a big way. There's no doubt about that. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, however, you know, they did not dominate the Monday Night Wars, like they like to pretend they had, they were up against the wall, you know, and Bischoff was unable to, Bischoff and, and WCW were unable to finish it, to finish them off, but, um, you know, I, I'm just at the point now where it's like, if Vince and Bruce Pritchard are doing something together, I'll know when the shit gets hot because we're in the wrestling world, but I don't want to sit here and wait for them to figure out a fucking formula that works in a fucking, you know, uh, how do I say this? In a time period where fucking people aren't even fucking drinking in the woods like we used to when we were fucking kids. Or getting that good shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't really care about fucking some soap opera fucking people talking to each other. It's fucking annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I want to see a fight, man. You know, I want to see some I want to see some shit. That's what I want to see. Yeah, like a good old-fashioned uh, steel cage match. Like barbed wire. Like, that's one thing I liked about, like, uh... Be as, as it may, I heard the stuff that they're, that's going around about CZW, Combat Zone Wrestling, but um, <laughs> the, like the last two shows I was at with them, like uh, I just literally just started with them before the pandemic and all this shit went hit the fan, but 
Like, those two like, Cage of Death matches I was at, they were pretty intense. Like, uh, seeing the one manager climb up on the outside of the ring and get knocked into the uh, barbed wire table at the bottom. And, like, people going through glass, hitting each other with um, with uh, with light rods and all, too. Like, it uh, brought back a lot of good ECW memories, but, yeah, so... Well, Combat Zone is definitely an alternative to... I guess what you could kind of say is, is old school wrestling or classic wrestling or whatever, but um, they're innovative with their promos in a way that I have not seen anybody do in a long time, and and they're also like an interesting stop on the indies because you know people come there and and you know who knows what's going through their head as they're getting involved in hardcore wrestling, but then when they come out, you know they're a little bit tougher and a little bit uh, you know have seen some shit, you know? Yeah, John Moxley is one that was in uh, CZW, and then he went MJF to... MJF, too. Yeah, MJF, and then... Yeah, John Moxley went from uh, there to WWE. Yeah, WWE, then from WWE to AEW. Yeah. And, like, I, I actually like his John Moxley character better in AEW because he's actually able to shine because he's not being held back. Yeah, I, I think he's still getting there. He's another one. He Like, he's... Like do you like do you think he's the toughest man on the planet? Because that's kind of his gimmick. I don't know if he's uh, pulled that off yet. You know, hmm. like uh, I, I I like what he's doing, and he's got a good look, and I want to see him just stop with the bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? I want to see him. I want to see him kick some fucking ass, man. Fuck the bullshit. Yeah, just completely unle- yeah, unleashed. Because I think it's kind of interesting too that his uh, his wife in real life, Renee, is still working with WWE, and he's with AEW. So wow. like. They're, him and his uh, him and his wife are working for uh, comp- uh, competing companies. You know, that's an interesting thing with all this stuff going on because if you watch the AEW show right before the riots in Minneapolis, Mike Tyson and those guys fucking mimic that shit like crazy. They 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 um they uh, they almost predicted it, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering about what's going on here behind the scenes. Like, did I hear right? Was Tyson a Trump supporter? I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, I think of Trump, yeah. I, I think of T- Tyson as more of a Tupac guy than I think of him as a, pol- a a political guy or something like that. Or you know, just the fact that he's you know one of the biggest draws in boxing history. You know what I mean? He's one of the greatest fighters of all time. So I, I I don't know what to make of him in AEW, but I liked it. And then I wonder because you know Vince is all caught up with uh, you know uh, his wife Linda and and Trump shit. Yeah. And being on that sports panel or whatever it is. So, I wonder how all this stuff is is fitting together and playing itself out behind the scenes in the wrestling business. Like, I know, I've even seen, like, posts and all on Facebook and all, like, um, about, Dwayne, about Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like, uh, about him possibly running for president in 2020. I know that would be interesting if that happened because... Well, he's an Allentown guy, too, man. Yeah. He's from out our way, Samoa Dynasty. I mean... Uh, I would vote for The Rock, but maybe not now after... I think we might need somebody to get us out of this hole we got in, you know? Yeah. Politically. Like, I actually thought I saw something, too, on Facebook uh, after that happened. Like, seeing like how The Rock went running for president, and then Stone Cold Steve Austin as vice president. Dude, that would yeah. be like <laughs> that would be a trip to see The Rock and Stone Cold running or, the country. Or what about this, man? Um, what if we had Jesse Ventura as the president, and The Rock as the vice president? Yeah, and then Stone Cold as Department of Defense. <laughs> Stone Cold as a uh, professional fucking throw me a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're Stone Cold. Like, I could, yeah. I could just see that someone uh, trying to invade the country and Stone Cold giving him, giving him a stunner, knocking him out. <laughs> yeah, Stone Cold did st- uh, stun Donald Trump, which, you know, there are videos of that on YouTube and shit. So if you're bored, you got to check out Steve Austin doing that. It's great. Um, so, uh... Here's the other thing, too. One of the things about the archives that I like to do here is we include the YouTube shoot interviews and podcasts inside of the wrestling history that we are trying to, um, you know, make sure is preserved and remembered properly. Um, so, you know, if there's any YouTube shoots where you think of any feuds, Alan, that we should talk about, I mean, just let me know. I, I was kind of thinking about the one between Adam Bomb and Shawn Michaels. Man, I'd like to see... You know, I'd like to see Adam Bomb kick his ass one day, man, to be honest. (laughs) I'd love to see that, too. See, that's the thing. This is what 
this is the kind of shit that Vince McMahon and Paul Heyman, or Paul Heyman's off the booking committee now, so Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard or Cody Rhodes and whoever's helping him book down at AEW or these independent guys, they if they thought about this, this would put asses back in seats once everybody gets back out to shows and shit is, who the fuck do you want to see fight each other? No, it's interesting, too, I was just thinking about, because the other week on SmackDown, like, um... They had an, an angle where uh, Sheamus was having uh, Jeff Hardy like uh, do a urine test in the ring because, like, he didn't want him. He didn't want to face a junkie, like, so he was gonna be. He was gonna make him take a piss test. And then, like, I remember, like, this was going back in the early in the late two thousands. Uh, Vince McMahon had Shawn Michaels do the same thing in the ring, take a uh, a piss test because the the week before Stephanie had uh, had drugged him and. Um, after the drug test was done, Shawn Michaels got out of there. It was a full cup of piss. And then Vince made a comment on that night. And Shawn Michaels was like, oh, it's better to be pissed off than pissed on. And then he just threw the piss, like, right in Vince's face. But then it was kind of funny, too, because the other week on SmackDown, like, uh, Jeff Hardy said the same thing and threw the piss in Sheamus' face. Well... Uh, if anybody is involved in some kind of, you know, piss-throwing contest, uh, I think Shawn Michaels would be a good person in that. Yeah, definitely, yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, do you have anything else you'd like to add, or? Uh, no, I'd say we wrap it up, man. Uh, this is Rick Smooth here with Alan Fenstermaker on Overlook Mountain at Woodstock, New York. This is another episode of Back on the Road. We love you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Good night.